Hi, this is Aaron at ThinkBotLabs.com and welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at enabling our robot to slide under a wall. I went ahead and set up a new scene with a wall for us to slide under. And I even threw in some saws under the wall in case the player doesn't slide all the way through. So first, on our robot, I decided to use a capsule collider versus the box collider. This has nothing to do with him sliding, I just felt it conformed much better to the robot. Next thing we need to do is on the robot, let's create another empty game object underneath it. And let's rename this object to Health Collider. Next, on the robot, let's go ahead and move the Player Health and the Capsule Collider trigger to that Health Collider. You can just right click on the Player Health, Copy Component, go to the Health Collider, and then Paste as New. And that you do it this way, and I'll go ahead and retain all those um, settings that you have in there. And go ahead and delete that Player Health. And then the capsule collider that is the trigger, go ahead and copy it, go to the health collider, and then paste as new. Okay, go back to the robot and remove the capsule collider that is the trigger and remove that. Next thing we need to do is we need to set up the animation um, for our sliding. So go to your animator, and in the animator, let's go ahead and grab our sliding animation and drag it into the scene. So mine is the very bottom one, slide, and I'm just going to bring it right here. And for us to slide, we need to create a new parameter, and it's going to be of type bool. We need to say is sliding. And we're going to make a transition between run and slide, and between slide and idle. And on the transition between run and slide, we're going to set has exit time. We're going to disable that. And then in the settings, we're going to uncheck fixed duration. We're going to set all that in code, so it'll be just fine. Also, on your slide animation, you go and make sure that it is not set to loop. Because we're just going to play the animation, we're not going to repeat it. On our slide, let's set up those booleans for the is sliding. So from run to slide, We'll need to say that sliding is true, is when we'll start sliding. And then from slide to idle, we just simply need to say is sliding is false. That's all we need to do in the animator. So let's go back to our robot and let's open our robot controller script. We need a couple things in here uh, for variables. So to slide, we need to track if he's sliding or not, so we're going to do that with a bool. Say sliding, and we're going to set that to false by default. We also need to set a condition for how long we want the player to slide. We're going to set that up in the code and then expose that to the inspector so we can adjust it as needed. We don't want him just sliding all the way across the scene forever, so um, I'm going to set this up as a float, set slide timer, and we're going to set that to zero. And we also need to set the maximum time to slide. And this is going to be the one that we expose. So public float max slide time. And for now we're going to set this to 1.5 seconds. And so the last variable that we need is a reference to our health collider game object. So on our robot, we have the capsule collider that encompasses our robot. And it's set as a trigger. So anything that hits this capsule collider, the player is going to take damage. So when we play our scene and we run and we switch to our sliding animation, the player is actually going to shrink in size, but the capsule collider is not. So though our sprite is going to be shorter, he's still going to take damage while he goes through here. So there's a couple ways to do this. First way is you can just simply disable the capsule collider while he slides through, which is the way we're going to do it today. Another way is, is that you can set, grab these offset and size variables and shrink that capsule collider to match the slide animation as he goes through it. But just uh, to show how the slide animation works, we're just going to disable that for now. 
So let's unpause that and let's go back. And like I said, we need to grab a reference to the health collider. And this is going to be serialized game object health collider. Reference to the health collider. And so also I've moved all of our update information um, into a git input um, because the only thing that we had in our update statement was movement stuff. So I created a new function called git input movement and moved our input in there and then in the update just referenced it or called it. So in git input movement we need to see if the player has pressed a particular button to enable him slide. So let's go ahead and set up that button. So I'll go to edit project settings input and let's create a new size so this is going to be 19 and on the last one rename this to sliding or just slide that'll be fine and name the positive button to left shift or whatever you would like and you can remove the alt and that's all we need to do there let's go back to our script so now when the player presses the left shift button, we're going to start his slide animation. We'll say if input get button down is slide, and you have to make sure that it's spelled exactly the same as you spelled it capitalization and all. And not sliding, then we're going to start our slide timer. And it's going to start off at zero. We're going to play our sprite animation. So animation dot set bool. We'll say is sliding. And we'll set that to true. Okay, so that'll play our sliding animation. And remember what I said about our capsule collider. He's going to hit those saws even though our sprite has shrank. So we need to just disable that. So we're going to say game object, get component, capsule collider, and it is of 2D, enabled equals false. And we're going to say health collider dot get component, capsule collider enabled equals false. So this is going to, again, this is going to disable the trigger for him to get damage and disable the collider so he won't bump into those saw blades. And then finally we're going to set our sliding to be true. We're also going to see if we are sliding we're going to increase our slide timer by time dot delta time. And this is going to give us a little tick rate. So now that we're increasing our slide timer by time dot delta time, we'll say if our slide timer is greater than our max slide time that we set up, then sliding. is equal to false. So once we've reached our max time we're going to set sliding to false and then we need to stop our animation is sliding to false and then we'll re-enable those capsule colliders once he's out of the tunnel. and the health collider alright so let's have a look at this again so we're looking to see if the player has pressed the slide button and he's not currently sliding if so we're going to set our slide timer to zero go ahead and start the animation for sliding and then disable both of our um, colliders. One is the trigger and one is the physical collider. 
and then finally set that sliding uh, boolean to true. And then in that same update loop we're going to see if we are sliding go ahead and start our slide timer and we're going to increase that by time dot delta time and then if the slide timer reaches the max slide time sliding is no longer true we're going to disable the sliding animation and then again re-enable both of our capsule colliders short and sweet so let's go ahead and save that go back to our scene okay go back to your robot and now you'll see that we have a health collider game object and the robot controller just grab that health collider and then just drag it in there okay let's play the scene and see how it looks all right running around press left shift start sliding and it comes back up and he comes back up after the max slide time 1.5 all right let's slide on our saws perfect all right let's focus on our player and look at those colliders so we go under it and those colliders disappear and see that tall oval just goes away and if we get stuck under it he starts getting damaged all right perfect so that's the way you set up your sliding under the wall animation. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Till then.